picks up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to episode four here with UTEP, our rebuild in college football 25. If you've missed the first three episodes and how we've gotten to three and one on the season, go check them out. It's been a blast so far. This team is playing great all of a sudden. Defense is stepping up and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're new here, make sure you like the video, show some support, have some fun in the comments, leave me some fun comments about this team, the players, and let's have some fun in this episode. But before we get into that rivalry against Sam Houston, which is going to be a huge game for us, let's slow it down and take a look around this dynasty. The first thing that must be noted in team stats, national team stats, sure, Rice has the best offense in the country, you want to know who has the best defense in the country? It's the U! UTEP Miners, ladies and gentlemen. It's been an amazing start, one I couldn't even have predicted. I don't even think UTEP fans could have possibly imagined such a good defensive start. We have allowed, we're the only team in the country that hasn't allowed a thousand yards of offense. Believe me, we have only played four weeks, a lot of teams have played five, but even with that, it's been an amazing start for the minor defense. And how about those minors? Only three penalties on the year. That's just a well-coached team. Thanks to yours truly, baby. Now there has not been a lot to write home about in the passing game. Cade McConnell has been pretty good. Not amazing. Only two picks in four games has been really good. Definitely efficient football. He's executed and he has a good passer rating. But we haven't really had any of our receivers show up in big ways. We've had big moments from Trey Goodman, from Azinwa, Jaden Smith, Nickelberry, everyone's had kind of their big moments, even Martavius Collins with that amazing touchdown catch last episode against Liberty, but no one's really broke out as our top receiver, we kind of figure it out as we go. And you see that in the Conference USA passing numbers, you see our two quarterbacks at the bottom of the list in terms of yards, but if you go to quarterback rating, a stat that really matters, we're going to face this guy, Jace Bauer, in the game, first game we play, but Cade McConnell's fourth, and he has a good passer rating. He's been efficient. Two interceptions in four games, only seven touchdowns, but he's passing the ball well when he needs to. He's making big runs. He's playing winning football, and that's what I really care about. You look at Conference USA rushing stats, Javon Jackson is second in yards, and he only has played four games. Quentin Cooley's played five so far. Yards per carry, definitely Javon Jackson so far as well. If you look nationally at rushing stats, Javon Jackson's not going to show up. Obviously, Ollie Gordon's having an amazing season. Donovan Edwards, Harrison Whaley, all the high-rated players are having really good seasons at running back. But as you go down the list, you see all these average numbers, yards per carry, basically. So basically, he's not getting as many carries as a lot of these bell cows. But if he did, he would have better numbers than them because he's averaging 6.8 yards a carry. There's not many guys that are at that number. There's a few that are at it or over it, but those are some of the best running backs in the country. And Javon Jackson, I think, in terms of volume, compares to some of these best running backs. So it also helps to note that Darian Trish has 23 carries on the year. He's also averaging over 6 yards a carry. He's been excellent when we've given the ball to him. And he's taking carries away from Javon Jackson, but that's honestly what we want. Both running backs are very healthy at this point and both are playing well and probably have a good amount of confidence looking at the top 25 what's going on around the country besides UTEP football Georgia's number one Ohio State two nothing really crazy in this top 25 maybe Oklahoma State being five and zero and number five in the country is pretty crazy A&M at six is crazy NC State at eight being five and zero that's definitely crazy Bama's already lost you see some of these other names, Colorado, who was terrible last season, is just highly rated in this game, and just probably because of clout gets a lot of recognition in college football 25. Whatever, that's fine. Maryland being in the top 25 is weird. Kentucky is a little weird. Texas has already fallen to 25, so interesting start in the top 25. Nothing crazy yet, though. I don't really see any upsets or big time movement from schools that you wouldn't expect to see in here last thing we're gonna do before we get into rivalry things let's do some crew in with the miners clayton sylvan is definitely our guy we're pushing for him he's our only four star a lot of our three stars probably could be four stars from what i've seen in terms of gems but clayton sylvan is definitely a four star and he's visiting this week and you see he's paired technically he's got a complimentary visit with our outside linebacker john roland who's also visiting this week fourth on our board so this is a big week for utep i'm telling you if we can beat sam houston state 
we're gonna get a good amount of impact from just in general from winning but also from a couple of complimentary visits we've also got a complimentary visit for ben torres who's gonna be visiting along with otis bowling hopefully these two offensive linemen can be bffs after coming to el paso this week and seeing the Miners beat down on Sam Houston State, hopefully. So that's the big thing from recruiting this week is visits. Brian Garcia is not visiting, but we're putting 75 hours into him because of how close Boise State is and because he's a linebacker. So we're actually allowed 75 hours for linebackers based on the points I've given me as coach. Jordan Bonet is close in his battle too. Kenyon Nevis is pretty close in his battle. So hopefully as we see him in his top three, we see Garcia in his top three, Bowling, Torres, Groland. A lot of these guys are in their top three. So I'm hoping we see some decisions if we can beat Sam Houston State. This might be a big week for recruiting in terms of win or loss. But let's talk about this rivalry. First and foremost, UTEP is hot coming into the rivalry. Looking at Sam Houston State, they came out hot as well beating Rice, beating UCF on the road, beating Hawaii, and then two very close losses against in-conference New Mexico State and then against their rivals Texas State. So they've played good football this whole year it seems. Quarterbacks first in the conference and a lot of things and now they get to go to UTEP. Their arch nemesis who is a new rival. Let's look at the rivalry here by numbers. Why are these two teams rivals if they've only played three times all time? UTEP luckily has won all three games, so we've got to keep that streak up. We're never going to let Sam Houston beat us, hopefully, in this Dynasty series. 651 miles separates these two schools. It's just over an 11 hour drive from one to the other. But why are they rivals if they've only played three times? Well, in Conference USA, with all the new realignments with these conferences, these two schools are the only two teams teams left in this conference from the state of Texas. So not only do they have the rivalry across the state with each other, yes, Texas is a big state east to west, but still in state, you know how important Texas football is to everybody in Texas and also in conference. We're going to see these guys every year and we're going to see this Texas school every year in our conference. So there's just an automatic hatred for these two teams already. Sam Houston thinks that they're the newcomers in this rivalry. They're the newcomers in the conference and that they're already better than UTEP. But UTEP has something to say about that. Sam Houston hasn't beat him and let's see if we can keep that streak up. Big time rivalry, big time game for recruits potentially coming to UTEP. They're going to be in the stands watching what is hopefully a minor victory today. I think it's about time we play some football. Welcome to the West Texas town of El Paso, the Sun Bowl and home to the UTEP Miners. And it's always a pleasure to come out this way. And we're certainly excited about the game we have in store. There's nothing quite like a great rivalry matchup in college football. The bitterness, the intensity, the lifetime of memories that will come as a result of what we're about to see in this one. As we'll see a squad from Conference USA, the Sam Houston Bearcats, taking on the winners of three straight, the UTEP Miners. The Miners are going to get the football first here in this game. Cade McConnell coming out to take charge for UTEP. Up the middle, got some space to run. It's going to be third down. Good pass to Azinwa. Can he get the first down yardage? He can't. It's fourth and inches. And I do not want to disappoint. I want to go out there and execute. And this is risky, of course. But if I like the way the setup looks, and it is pretty open in the middle, let's give it to our fullback. Come on, big call here, and it pays off. Julian Lopez, get that first down, baby. You gotta risk it for the biscuit, and that is what we are doing at UTEP this year. We're going all in, leaving no crumbs. Javon Jackson, six yards on first down. Third and long here. Gonna look for the receiver. It's just outside of his outstretched arms. Cade misses Nickelberry, and it's gonna be fourth down, and we are gonna have to punt this one. All right, let's see this elite number one defense in the country for UTEP. Honestly, I have no clue how we have the number one defense in the country. We looked terrible against Nebraska in week one, and we don't have a lot of high overall players. This team is definitely not very good on paper, so I don't know how we've gotten to this point defensively, statistically. That's what I was expecting more of this year, but... Yeah, honestly, I think we've just gotten a little bit lucky, but, you know, we definitely made some big plays. Let's see what happens today. Third and six. We're going to blitz the corner. 
Antoine Williams is going to cover the middle here. See if we can get it. See if Sam Houston can get stopped and they can't. Jace Bauer picking up the first down. Oh, good play. Way to react quickly, Jake Hall. Break up the pass. It's going to be third down here for Sam Houston. See if we can hold him to a field goal here. Third down. They are looking over the middle. Make the hit. There it is. Get him down on the ground before he gets the first. And we are just going to allow the three. Barely makes it. Squeezes it in there. Sam Houston first on the board. My God. Cade McConnell is missing receivers today. He's not on his game right now. He has not been on his game, but we need him here. It's third down. See if we can get somebody open. Judah Zin was the target, and he has him. That's a perfect pass. Timed it well and got the first down. Start of the second quarter here. We're going to give it to Javon Jackson. Great cut. There he goes. Action. Jackson to the house. Look at the quick joystick action from number four here. JJ all day to the house and putting UTEP in the lead, getting points on the board like we wanted. Oh God, we did a man blitz. They're running a screen and they're gonna pick up that first down. They're moving the football right now. Sam Houston across the 50, down to the 38. Couple of good defensive plays now, and from the 40, it's third and 13. Would love to get a stop here, prevent even a field goal chance. On third and long, you'll have to turn it loose deep. Gonna give it to the running back underneath, and he's gonna get just enough yards. Come on, man. Uh, it's a good play here from Sam Houston. Big hit from Corey Chapman, who's been a big hitter all year, but they're moving it. Watch the quarterback here. He tries to run. Jalen Jones, the freshman who's been outstanding this season, makes the tackle. And it's second and goal from the 12. That was a big play. Come on, they've gotten two straight third down conversions. Third and goal from the eight here. Just make a stop defense. Come on! Westmo sacks the quarterback. No other choice here. It's going to have to be three points for Sam Houston, and they will take it. 7-6. UTEP still leads. Really hoping we can roll to the right here. That's going to be crucial. It's a good rush from the defensive end. It's a good throw from Cade McConnell, but Javon Jackson cannot hold on. Love running that road on third down, but Sam Houston's defense prevails here. Oh, what a pass here. Down to the 30. They're moving it. Oh, come on. Looking for the end zone. That's going to be picked. Mistake made here, and we should take it out now. It was going to be a touchback, and then it wasn't, but big interception. Number 13 for UTEP. It's Jace Hunter, and we have just under a minute to work with. Let's see if we can run the football down the field. Oh, good screenplay here. They don't always work. Javon Jackson picking up yards. We're going to call a timeout here. We've got three to play with. Come on, offense. Nickelberry's going to have space. On the outside, Nickelberry makes the catch. Let's hurry it up. Let's hurry it up. Let's run. Red zone scissors. Come on. See if we can get the defense all mixed up. It's a good snap. We do have Javon Jackson. Oh, it's picked off. That was a nice, nice read by the corner. Oh, God. And now Sam Houston's going to have plus position. Just when you tapped out, we were going to move that football. Should have put that ball on a line. Hung it up too long, and Cade is picked. Come on, let's go! Maurice Westmoreland showing why he's an NFL draft prospect. Heading to the quarterback once again. Oh my god, oh my god, how did he beat him that easily? Oh, what a ball and what a touchdown. Sam Houston's going to take the lead here. Man, Josiah Allen just got absolutely burned. Let's just run this one out and go into the half. All right, and what has been a number one defense in the country so far is going to have to step up right as we start the second half. We kick off to Sam Houston. Wow, really good read option here from Jace Bauer breaking tackles. Oh, come on. Yeah, baby, that's how you make up for getting burned. Josiah Allen with his third pick in three games steps in front of the receiver and makes a huge play to get the football for UTEP here. That was absolutely massive. Now we have a chance to take the lead on offense. 
Oh, come on. Javon Jackson breaks that tackle, and there was room to run. Third down here. Third and 11. We have not been able to do much on offense. Give it to the running back. Got plenty of room to run. Get that first down. Fourth and inches. You know what we're going to do. Julian Lopez. Fight for that first down. Another fourth down conversion. Oh, good cut here from Javon Jackson. Bouncing it to the outside. Spinning, dropping defenders, and getting nine. What an electric player Javon Jackson really is. He's just been outstanding all season. See if we can get some time here to throw the ball. Cade McConnell has room to run. Look at his speed, which is lacking, but it is enough to get a first down again for the Miners. There's a chance this could break. Hold your blocks. Come on. Javon Jackson again to the outside, cutting. Getting down to the five, JJ, all day, doing it again. Gonna run the ball again here, it's Darian Trish, sees a hole in the middle, gets down to the one. Jackson is back in, the ball is on the one yard line, he's gonna beat that man to the end zone, and Javon Jackson is in again, second touchdown of the day. It is his time, it's always his time. You know, Cade McConnell has not really impressed me today, hasn't necessarily impressed me a whole lot this season, but... It's truly the Javon Jackson show, the traveling Javon Jackson show at this point, and I'm all here for it. Jay Spower's thrown two picks, and it's third and seven here for Sam Houston. See if our defense can step up again when we need him. Jake Hall covering over the middle, doing so well, and we're gonna get to the quarterback again, and you guessed it. It's Westmo! Three sacks on the day, blowing up the right tackle and getting all over Jace Bauer. He's going to be seeing Maurice in his nightmares tonight. Oh my god, we ran into the punter. Come on! Oh my god, just an absolute momentum killer. Killing our momentum, Jace Hunter. Come on! And I don't love running man defense, but we're going to do it here. We're going to align our linebackers correctly, and we're going to bring Westmoreland, hopefully, to the quarterback. Bauer tries to get away from him, and he's just going to slide. Smart decision, business decision. He's wreaking havoc all game, and he's fourth and an forcing another fourth down. Do not run into the punter this time, for the love of God. And just as the third quarter is about to end here, we are going to snap it. See if we can get a playoff here. Oh, come on! I mean, I know we don't have the best offensive line in the world, but Cade McConnell has always a lot of pressure on him. And let's see if we can get a pass off here. That's going to work. Darian Trish breaks one tackle, shakes one man. It's fourth and eight. A valiant effort from Darian, but we are going to have to punt this. All right, and it just got real now. Fourth quarter, we're up by one point need to keep Sam Houston off of the board here third down UTEP needs to get after the quarterback I'm gonna send the pressure and Westmoreland's gonna be back in coverage here let's see if he can do it all here we're gonna be playing his zone he has covered his man so far and just enough pressure on the quarterback where he can't get it off fourth down no don't run into the punter oh my god you're making me so nervous I cannot believe how close he got to running into that punter right there. It has not been the prettiest game, but Javon Jackson has been a shining star out there, as he always is. And here he comes again. Javon Jackson over 100 yards with that last rush. And we are going to try to waste as much clock here as we can and continue to rely on our bell cow. This is a big play near midfield, getting closer to two minutes left. One yard to go on third down. Full back in front of Javon Jackson. Just run it up the gut and get that first down. To the two-minute warning we go. One-point lead. You know what? We're going to run this. I like the setup for Darian Trish. Just hold your blocks. Darian Trish, you know, that's a positive gain right there. I like that we ran that play. Going to run a jet touch pass here on second and four. See if we can catch him off guard. Just enough. Trey Goodman, if we could have held some blocks there, had some space to run. But another first down. Big one. You know what, man? First down. Look at the defense they're running. It's basically goal line. If we can get them to bite on the run and run play action here. Oh, you know what? The concept was great, but execution not as much they get to us luckily we do have the lead and they have one timeout to go i'm gonna run a halfback screen here we need to get this completion at least gotta get the clock moving come on get it to darian trish that'll do darian trish bounce it to the outside what a tackle streamlined right at darian trish he could not take a good angle 
and we did not get the first down there, but we need to. We just need to get somebody open enough to get that first down. It's looking like it might be Martavius Collins. The ball is tipped, deflected. We have a chance to kick a field goal here with Buzz Collins or go for it. We have a decision to make. I think I want to try to take this field goal here and trust our defense. This is crazy. Buzz, I don't know if he's going to get that there. Come on, football. Get over the line. Buzz, Flaviano, big kick there. Four-point lead is huge. Sam Houston now has to score a touchdown to win this game. Anything else in the minors are going to take victory in this rivalry. I cannot tell you how stressful that was to see the meter not quite fill up and not think he was going to get it there. Sam Houston would have had the easiest field goal chance ever, but four point lead with a minute 37 left. Come on defense, we need you El Paso, get loud. And it's sacked again. Down goes Bauer. We get to the quarterback again. Run cover three. We're all not all mixed up on defense. We're fine with hurry up here. It's third down. He's got a man over the middle though. Big play. At some point, we might want to use a timeout just to set our defense, just to have some confidence in what we're running defensively. Jace Bauer running the show right now and doing it well. We get the pressure on him and we had that covered in the middle. Good play. 56 seconds to go. Looking over the middle. We've got that covered. Tight end catches it. It is a first down, and they're starting to get towards field goal range. That's not what they need, but they are moving this football just enough, making us sweat just a little bit right now. Looking again to throw, but there's Maurice. Oh, my God. He can't stop sacking him. They have to run. Hurry up. They have no timeouts. Sam Houston are running out of time, and it's third and 18. Big play here. Cover what you have to cover. Pick that off. Let's go. It's picked. UTEP are going to win this football game. What has gotten us to this point this year is getting us to the victory today. A massive win for the Miners. Recruits in the stands. El Pasoans loving it, and it's Yes Man Green! Yes Man! Let's go, baby! I'm greedy, I want to run the ball more. Darian Trish getting more space to run. That clock's gonna run down, though. They have no timeouts. We love to see it. 2-1! Miners win! UTEP wins again! That's four straight victories for my Miners. Things are looking good for those boys from El Paso right now. Defense wins the day again. Javon Jackson absolutely ran all over Sam Houston, player of the game. If it wasn't Maurice Westmoreland who had at least four or five sacks, but Javon Jackson was the star again for this team. It's gonna be a fiesta in El Paso tonight. The home of the best Mexican food. And listen, don't just take my word for it. Take notable El Pasoan and former Green Bay Packer running back Aaron Jones's word for it. The people there, they're amazing. They treat you well. Some of the best, best Mexican food you ever mm. find. Um, I say the best. Definitely not our best possession of time stat today. We made a lot more mistakes. Sam Houston was good on offense. They definitely took it to us a little bit more than we've seen so far this season but Cade McConnell turned the ball over just that one time. He was pretty efficient, not necessarily that impressive from Cade McConnell, but he didn't have to be impressive. Javon Jackson was outstanding again. This dude is stealing the show, running the football over everybody we face. Another balanced attack in the pass, and you know what? As much as I want to get the pass attack going, this just might be how things go. And if we're winning football games and beating our rivals in big games like that and making plays defensively down the stretch, I don't care how it looks on the stat sheet. What an epic finish to that game, but we've got hopefully some more epic things about to happen. Some recruiting decisions I hope are going to be made in this next week. It's time to sim and find out what's going to happen. Another one.
Another one. Another one. Can I get a hell? Yeah! Our first four star is coming, Clayton Sylvan. And that win proved big time. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five of our recruits that were close to making their decision have decided to come to UTEP. And how about that? Well deserved for Maurice Westmoreland, National Defensive Player of the Week to a tune of nine tackles and four sacks for our big number zero. And how about our boys Jalen Jones, the freshman edge rusher, and Maurice Westmoreland, number one and two in the conference in sacks. And you see Jalen Jones has seven and a half stacks, and I went over to the national rankings just to see if he was up there. Seven is the lead, so that means that he is the lead at seven and a half. It's just not showing up in the game, but... Jalen Jones leads the country in sacks, and Maurice Westmoreland is third. You want to talk about how huge those commitments were for us? Comparing us to our other conference foes in Conference USA, we now have the best recruiting class. We have five commits, the only four star, and the most three stars. UTEP is officially coming for Conference USA, baby. But that is going to do it here for this episode. Next episode, we're going to go to Bowling Green to face Western Kentucky and then at home against Florida International. We're going to get back to two games in episode, and then episode six will be La Tech in Middle Tennessee State. Seven is going to be Kennesaw State and then at Tennessee. And then episode eight is going to be New Mexico State. That's a big bowl game, the Battle of I-10. And what I learned through social media is that people would love me to stream one game a season with UTEP. And I know I don't really want to stream all of these games. I like the post-production. I like the more episode kind of feel. You get to see the highlights. But for the New Mexico State game, I'm going to stream it live. I am going to include it in episode 8. That's what episode 8 is going to be all about. But the gameplay for New Mexico State is going to be streamed live whenever I end up doing that. So... Lots to look forward to this season. More recruiting to do. We brought in five prospects this episode. We learned that Maurice Westmoreland absolutely hates Sam Houston State. And I'm sure we're going to learn a lot more in the episodes to come. But if you enjoyed yourself, make sure you smash that like button below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Join our ever-growing family here on this channel. I appreciate all you guys. And I will see you next time with the Miners. Picks up. This has been Therios. You'll never walk alone.